Good morning. How's everyone doing today? Amen. We just want to thank you for joining us. It's so good to see everyone in the house of the Lord. And everyone was talking this morning and laughing. You could just feel, feel joy and, and laughter. And, and I just love that in a family. And, and we're just, we also want to thank everyone who's watching us on Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us once again. And, and we're going to get ready to start our worship set. And we just want to, um, I'm going to go ahead and open us up in prayer. Amen. Father, we just come to you. You are highly exalted, God, in all the earth, Father. And you're worthy to be praised, God. You're worthy to be worshipped, God. And we love you, Father. And we just thank you for everyone that is here today that has joined us, God. And we know that you have something wonderful in store for every single person here. Lord, remove any distractions, God. Remove anything that might be weighing on our hearts or in our minds, Father. And just to empty ourselves out and allow you to fill us once again this morning, God, with your presence. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. He is highly exalted. Are you, are you ready to worship today? Amen. Here we go.
again the wonder of how you brought deliverance, the access of my heart. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters from my release. Oh, Yahweh, you're the God who fights for me.
fights for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea. We sing to you. Come on, church. We lift our song. Sing hallelujah. We deserve, deserve it all, God. for me winner of every victory sing hallelujah no matter how it looks like we have the victory no we win we know we win oh Lord we just lift our voice we lift our song to you, God, and we sing nothing is impossible, 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 for you, God, the winner of every battle. Every victory is yours. And do what only you can do. Move what only you can move. Even the impossible is possible for you. Do what only you can do. Move what only you can move. Even the impossible is possible for you. Let's do that for time. And nothing stops getting ready to roll. And I feel the faith that is starting to rise. Come on, church. And I see a word on the edge of revival. And I see it's only a matter of time. Sing that chorus. Do what only you can do. Move what only you can move. Even the impossible is possible for you. already won. You receive that victory. And I see a church on the verge of revival. And I see a kingdom is already come. So do what only you can do. Do what only you can move. Even the impossible is possible for you. 
You can make the chains come loose. You can tell the mountain move. Even the impossible is possible for you. Let's see that one more time. Do it only. Do what only you can do. Do what only you can move. Even the impossible is possible for you. Take these chains all loose. It's possible for you, even the impossible, even the impossible, it's possible for you. I see this high, you said it, and you said it, and I see it. It's little miracles, there's power in Jesus' name. It's possible for you.
Father, we just come before you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father. We surrender our hearts to you this morning, oh God. We give it all to you this morning, Father. We didn't come today with an agenda. We didn't come today, Father God, for religion. We came today because of you, Jesus. The author, the finisher of our faith. With nothing else in mind, Father God, we came to worship. We came to praise. We came to lift up the name that's above every other name. The most wonderful name of Jesus. That name that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. You are the Christ. You are the King. You are the Savior. You are the Chosen One. And Father, we bless you this, this very morning, Father God. And we just give you thanks here today above all other days, Father. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So church, let's give the Lord praise this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, church, but I'm ready. Are you ready this morning? Look at the person next to you. Give them a high five. Tell them I'm ready. It's coming. Amen. Praise God. Is there anybody here this morning for the very first time? We have any first-time visitors? I know I see some new faces. Anthony, it's been a while, bro. Am I going to put you on the, new, the newcomer team? <laughs> yes, I'm calling you out, my friend. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to see you today, brother. It's good to see you today. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So we had other hands that were up, yeah? Okay, we got Richard, Hernandez, Anna, and Alex. Now, you guys are going to trick me with this name, aren't you? That's a tough, your, your Zagara, your Zagara. Okay, there you go. Yes, that, that right there. Welcome this morning to Breakthrough, amen. Tierra Lockhart, DJ Clending, and Lisa Urio. Welcome this morning to Breakthrough Community Church. Good to have you in the house here today, amen. We're going to take a few minutes, church. Look at the person next to you, say five minutes. We're going to have five minutes, church, to greet one another in the name of the Lord. God bless you this morning.
So this morning we got a few announcements. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we want to invite you to our Christmas shopping at our home, uh, kitchen and decor sales directly after church on December 5th. If you have new or uh, like new items uh, that fall into these categories, we will take them off your hands. All monies raised will be uh, going directly to the church. Um, so we're still trying to uh, open up the other side and uh, we got some construction that we need to do and some permits and some um, drawings and architect stuff. So all that costs money, and uh, we know that God is faithful, and uh, and uh, he'll use you to be a part of that. Amen? Worship night is this Wednesday, the 24th. This is the night before Thanksgiving. Uh, we will be uh, here at 7 p.m. to pour out our praise and thanksgiving to the Lord and Savior. So um, come and join with us. Come and let's celebrate our King. Uh, let's uh, uh, not just thank him on a, a holiday or a certain uh, day, but every day, you know, he is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of all that we have um, because he gave all that he had. Amen. Uh, at this time, if you need a prayer card or a tithing envelope, just raise your hand and our ushers will be happy to get you either one of them. And uh, just keep them raised and let them know what you need. If you're filling out a prayer card, just, um, you know, fill it out uh, specifically if you can. And uh, we'll pray over those uh, cards as well. Amen. How many is excited for the holidays? Amen. They came by too quick, right? Have you been able to find everything you're looking for? I say that uh, there's nothing going to be left, I guess, or it's sitting somewhere in some dock or something. But it's all good. It's not about giving, right? It's not about the gifts. Amen. It's about Jesus. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray before the Lord. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity, Lord, that we have to give back to your kingdom, Father. Father, we're grateful, Lord God, just to be called sons and daughters of the Most High this morning, Father. Father, I ask, Lord God, that this morning we would give out of the abundance of our heart, Father. That, Lord God, we just not worship you with lip service, Father, but in action and in truth, Father. So, God, I pray, Lord God, that we would just give back to you this morning a portion of what you've given to us, Lord. Father, we ask that you bless this tithe and offering, Lord. Let it be multiplied to meet the, the needs of your house, Lord God, and to reach others across the world. Father, we love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. Well, it seems like everybody's in a really good mood here today. Is it that or is it the Holy Ghost? Uh, I hope it's the Holy Ghost because happiness comes and goes, doesn't it? But joy, joy sticks around, doesn't it? Amen. It's good to have the joy of the Lord. We spoke about that last week. And, um, you know, I just want to thank those who came out last night uh, to our outreach. And, you know, it's much more than about the blankets and the waters and things like that. You know, those are just an in for us to be able to speak to the people that are out there. And 
and just uh, lead them to Christ, you know. And uh, we had a great showing of people. I think we had probably a good 40, 40 people at least, huh? And, uh, man, what an amazing job Johnny did getting things together. You know, um, you know it, it, there was one young man particularly, and it was the young man Richard, um, that really, really just said something in my heart. So if you can, just keep Richard in your prayers. There are some pictures that we did post on the Breakthrough page. I know my wife has some pictures, and Johnny has some pictures as well. If you want to see what you missed out on, uh, then you can go to the page, and next time you could be there live, amen. Because I'll tell you what. When you come from an event like that and you get to see uh, what people are going through right now in this time, um, you'll truly see how blessed we are as God's people, amen, um, that we're not finding ourselves uh, like we used to be, first of all, but not finding ourselves in the predicament that some of these people are in right now. Not all those people wanted to be out there. We ran into many different cases where some people uh, lost their jobs due to COVID, some people uh, you know, just so many different reasons, you know, um, but not everybody out there was a drug addict or prostituting or things like that. You know, there's people out there that, that just hard times hit. Amen. And so we prayed for both alike, you know, that God's salvation would find them and find them well. You know, so thank you once again, Johnny, and all the crew that came out to help out. Those of you that bought blankets, they were well, well. Uh, deserved. I mean, to those people were so grateful, you know. I mean, even today it's a little cold, um, but we're just very thankful. And, and so, um, also too, real quick, before I forget, uh, didn't Jove do an amazing job leading the song? Yeah. 17 years old, she turned. I know she doesn't like attention, but I just, you know, I had to acknowledge it. I'm sorry, Jove. Um, but, yeah, she did an amazing job. It was just her birthday, too. So, you know, praise God. There's two good things there, right? Amen. So if you have your Bibles with you this morning, we're going to be turning to the book of Psalms, chapter 100. And um, if you want to put a title to this morning's sermon, if you're watching online, um, it's a call to Thanksgiving. And so are you guys ready for Thanksgiving? Really? And I don't think we've even bought the turkey yet, right? Oh, we did? Oh, we finally did? Okay, good. That shows you how involved I am, right? <laughs> But um, this week is a week above all other weeks that many of the world even uh, acknowledges to giving thanks to God. And so I wanted to read a portion of scripture here in Psalms 100, starting in verse 1. The word of God reads, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Let's pray this morning. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, most of all, that your name would be lifted up high, Father, that you would anoint this word, Father God. I ask that you would remove me. Let your Holy Spirit speak to your people. Let it not fall upon deaf ears this morning. Let us not only be hearers of your word, but doers of your word, Father. We bless you. We praise you. We worship you. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. So this portion of scripture here, basically it actually starts off in Psalms 91. And um, it kind of looks ahead a little bit uh, to the coronation of the king, Jesus. The psalm is a setting of the millennial reign of Jesus. Millennium is how many years? thousand year reign amen and so we are god's people and the sheep of his pasture so it's telling us here to enter his gates with thanksgiving amen we want to get into the very presence of god we need to be thankful you know it was it was a kind of setting this morning where i woke up and the very first words out of my mouth and, and i'm not going to lie to you it's not the first words out of my mouth every morning but today i just said thank you lord you know, after seeing what we seen last night, I was so grateful to God that uh, I'm not the person that I used to be. And I was especially grateful this morning because I woke up. He allowed me to wake up another day, preach another sermon, attend another service, be with his people. You know, he, that's a blessing to have the family of God that we have. Amen. And it's not just this church, but it's the people of God, you know, all over that we're connected to. 
So uh, there's a time when his praises are going to fill the earth at all times during that reign. And it's a blessed time when the glory of God is going to fill the entire, entire earth. And, you know, it's going to be very different than it is now, right? Because his glory isn't filled around the earth right now. There's a lot of things that are clouding the glory of God, the voice of God. There's many different voices that are coming in. And that's why I said this week is a special week where even some of the world acknowledges and thanks God. Uh, for all that he's done. And so this Thursday, we're going to carry out the tradition. Um, how many of you guys overeat during this time? How many of you guys uh, have loved the leftovers? It's like things get better over time, huh? Kind of like spaghetti, right? Spaghetti just gets better as you as you carry on with spaghetti, right? Um But, you know, um, if you look at the tradition that America has, in 1621, there was a it was a terrible year and and half of the the pilgrims, they died. But this psalm uh, has a true setting in the millennium. I'm sorry. This psalm basically right here explains why we uh, should be grateful. Um, The pilgrims, they set aside three days in December to praise God for a corn harvest. It was real bountiful. They were starving. They were dying. It was cold. Diseases had come in. Um, But the response here um, in 1789, a little later, um, you know, was to give a day of thanks unto God because God is good. God is good back then, and he's still the same God today and still just as good to us today. Later on, things changed, um, you know, where our independence came from Britain in the 1800s, mid-1800s. And then finally, in 1941, the United States Congress decreed that the fourth Thursday in November was to be National Day of Giving Thanks Unto God. And so that's what we're going to be doing as a nation, is, be giving, uh, is to be giving thanks to God. So a lot of times this week, you know, people take time off of work. They go out of state to visit family members and so forth. And I, and I pray, I know a lot of you guys are going to either be out of town or having people in. But I want to encourage you here today to come to this Wednesday service. If you truly, truly want to, to experience what Thanksgiving really is about, our worship service was planted on that day for a reason, so that we can give thanks and praise our God. Amen. So I want to really invite you guys out. And I'll tell you what, there hasn't been a night that we've done one of these that the Holy Spirit has not just moved in a tremendous, tremendous way. It's not just a time when we come to worship. But, you know, because many of us, we come to worship, but we get something even more out of it. I believe we get more out of it than God gets more out of it. Amen. Because when you go into the presence of someone that's higher than you, who thinks higher than you, uh, then you come out with more than what you came in with. Amen. You see, we don't have anything to add to God. But he's got plenty to add to us, doesn't he? Amen. And so when we come into his presence and we worship together like that corporately, Uh, We're the ones that come out winning. Amen. So God goes so far to say is being thankful to him is his will for our lives. It it talks about it in first Thessalonians. But um, a lot of times we're not very grateful people. Uh, We can complain a lot. Do do we know complainers? Any complainers? You know, I saw this video that had me cracking up. And I don't know if there's a truth to it or not. But this guy did a survey of mcdonald's fries and he got the small fry and the large fry and he poured the small one into the big one and guess what it was the same size it was the same amount of fries and he was mad he was upset he said look at mcdonald's is burning all of us and i was like you know people will find anything to complain about you see what i'm saying we can find anything to complain about we can look at our circumstances We can look at our lives, and we can always find something to complain about. But I want to tell you, we have a lot more to be thankful for than we do to complain about. And that's why I love when people show up to the events like we had last night, because it brings us back to reality that we're actually not off so bad. Amen? That God has truly, truly, truly been good to us. Amen? Are we not farther ahead than we used to be before we knew the Lord? And I'm not talking about material things. I'm talking about some of us got our mind back. Some of us got joy again. Amen. Some of us got delivered from some things we never thought we'd be delivered from. You know, I was expressing to Richard last night that I tried uh, not being an addict many, many times over before I met Christ. 
And once Christ came into the picture, that day was done. That man had died. And I said, Richard, in order for you to move a step closer to recovery, you're going to have to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. That is the key right there. If there's somebody listening or watching online, I want to let you know tonight, if you want change and you've been looking for change, you've been trying to change and it just hasn't happened, Jesus. You tried everything else. Try Jesus, the author, the finisher of your faith. You see, you can still be um, hurting. You know, I, I sat in the back for half of the worship because I'm hurting. I'm in pain, but that doesn't take away my joy. And that's not going to take away my preaching. It's, I still have a new song in my heart. And I can have that because I got the joy of the Lord. That is my strength. Whether I'm hurting or in pain or not, it does not matter. I'm going to worship my God. I'm going to sing praises to his name. That new song that I sing, I'll always sing. Amen. It will never get old. Some songs get old, don't they? You guys remember when you found your favorite song and you just played it over and over and you had it on repeat? Remember that? Right? Am I just the only one that does that? I know it's strange, but that's what I do. But when I find that I worship God, it never gets old. It's always fresh, and he always has something fresh to give me. There's portions of scripture like this one that we read this morning that call us to be grateful. But so many reasons of, of that we should be grateful is because God's goodness towards us now. Is there anybody here? Well, I'll ask, I guess, this question. Has God been bad to anybody here? No, we can't all be liars, right? In the same place. Right? You ever been in a room full of liars? I, ha I have. <laughs> right? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? But when you're in the room with God's people and a question is asked to you that way, we cannot all be liars. And you see, so none of us have experienced God being bad to us. A lot of times people get knocked out of the box because they think God's been bad to them in a certain way because he allowed something to happen. But every time I have that little thought in my head, try to even come up, I remember that God is still good, God is still great, and I'm still way better off than I used to be. Amen? And I started asking, I, start, I, I, I changed my methods of when I speak to God from asking him, why are you allowing this to happen to me? Two, what is it you want me to learn from this, Lord? Somewhere in my life, there's lack, and you're trying to show me that lack. Now, the method, we talked about the method, isn't always going to be what we think it's going to be, but God has a plan, and his ways are not our ways, amen? His thoughts are not our thoughts. So the psalmist here opens this psalm by is issuing a call to worship and praise before God. He's teaching us how to come in to God's presence. You know what I love about the Word of God? In, in, uh, in Psalms 22, our, it tells us right here that God will inhabit the praises of his people. In other words, God's going to live in the praises of his people. Do you want God to move in? Do you want him to move into your heart? Do you want him to move into your spirit? Do you want him to live there, to reside there? Do you want the spirit of God to change you? Praise him because he inhabits the praises of of his people he lives in the praises of his people when we're sad when we're depressed when we're down praise him because he'll come in and reside in you he'll live in you and i'll tell you something when we do that oh my goodness you'll see a change of heart that you have it's amazing what god can do now there's three different manifestations of praise that bring us into the presence of god one of them is to enter with shouting. Woo! Does that sound familiar? Because some of us love to enter with shouting, and that's what we should do. Well, I'll tell you what. When, when some of us, whether we had a good voice or not, when our song came on, it was on. You didn't care who heard you, even out of whack, right? <laughs> you guys, we should have one day Nikki do a solo up here. <laughs> so when it says make a joyful noise... You're going to be good. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Amen. That's what we do. We make a joyful noise. It doesn't say only you that have good voices. If that was the case, I wouldn't be singing either. Amen. You guys have heard me a couple of times from up here, just a few lines, and I know when to cut it off. 
Because I can feel the laser beams coming from the wife. Like, right? Make a joyful noise. We've got to enter into his presence with shouting. Amen? Because when we are Christians, when we are saved, we're proud of it. There should never be a time when we're ashamed to be Christian. When I was from a certain neighborhood back in the day, I was proud of my neighborhood. I fought for it for nothing. If you think about it now, we fought. We were renting. We didn't even own the house. <laughs> Does that make sense? I hope se prendió el foco, right? The light bulb's turning on for some of you. We fight for something that doesn't belong to us, but now we are the people of God, the children of God. We have something to fight for, church. And we should shout his name from the rooftop. There was a, a couple, a, a father and a son that came to us. You remember the gentleman with the, with the dog, the pit bull? And they're in a dire situation themselves. And um, he said, you know what? We heard music. We heard testifying. He said, we had to come and see what was going on. When we shout his name, it catches the attention of the unsaved. Amen? When we praise him, when we worship him. If you're lost and you're looking for an answer, that will get your attention right there. Because somebody, I mean, they were looking, and the guy was looking at me, and he goes, you don't look like normal church people. I go, I know, huh? <laughs> and they said, do you go to this church? I go, yeah, I'm the pastor. They're like, I go, I, I know. I hear it all the time. You don't look like a regular pastor. I get it. Amen. But that's okay. That's all right. God loves me just the same. Amen. He loves you. He loves them just the same. I said, you know, if you come and visit the church, I guarantee you that they're going to bring you in with open arms. Well, I don't have any good clothes. Don't worry about that. You come as you are. It's all right. You come as you are. It don't matter to us. Amen. So keep those two gentlemen in prayer. It was going to be their last day in that hotel today, as a matter of fact. And uh, just to hear their story. So just keep them in prayer. Amen. I, I, I don't remember their names offhand. I know I wrote it down somewhere, but. Michael. Sean. Sean and Michael. Keep those two gentlemen in your prayers today that God will continue to provide for them. So when we come into the presence of God, we're to enter with shouting. We're also to enter with service. Look at the person next to you. Say, enter with service. We're challenged to serve the Lord with gladness. Look at the person next to you, smile. It's okay if you're missing teeth. It's okay if you didn't brush. You know, it's all right. We come in with gladness. Amen. Why? Like I said, we have a new song to sing. We no longer are depressed. We're no longer downtrodden. We're no longer addicted. We're no longer all the things that used to keep us away from the things of God and the people of God and the church of God. We have a new song to sing, church. We have to enter with gladness. That means when we come to church, we serve God by serving his people. Amen? And serving the lost. That's one thing we didn't separate ourselves from is the lost. Because at one time we were lost, but now we're found. At one time we were blind, but now we see. God reached out from heaven and called you by name. Uh, by name. That above all the other things in this entire world, you know, if you think about it, you look at the ocean in itself and how many animals need feeding. How many of the sea creatures need feeding? He's doing all that, but he still remembers your name. And every time you pray to him, he hears you. While he's doing all the other things around the world, around the earth, in the constellations in heaven where they move. Everything is guided by God, but he still has time for you. It's kind of a mind blower, isn't it? You see, he's not limited like we are by time, space, or matter. He's not limited by those things. They don't get old to him. He is the everlasting God. And they don't get tiresome for him. Amen? So we're challenged this morning. We're not to grow weary, like Galatians says, in doing well, in doing good things. The word glad li gladness literally means joy. That means we're to look at our service unto God with joy. What does the church need? What do God's people need? What do the lost need? And we need to meet those different needs that they're going to have. And we have to do that with joy, with peace in our mind. Now, I have a video, and it takes... 
It takes about 35 seconds or so to really get into it. But, you know, I was looking, in, you know, um, at different videos of people just doing random praise in different places. And I found this one. I believe it's Penn State. And it looks like the cafeteria area. And this gentleman just starts standing up and he starts to worship God. And then you get to see the reaction of different people there. Amen. And I know there's a couple other people that are going to help him back up and sing. So maybe we could dim the lights just a little bit, just a little tiny bit so you guys can see it a little better. I know we're still videoing, so we have to keep it still a little lit. But if you can go ahead and just play the video here this morning, give it about 30 seconds and you'll see how the Lord will kick it in. We got sound? If not, Marcos, you're going to have to sing it. Does anybody read lips? <laughs> All right. All right. You know what? We'll go ahead. Are you ready? Okay. You can see the confusion on some people. That's good. Thank you. You know, it keeps going on for another five minutes. And, you know, I was looking at different videos and I was seeing random people going and worshiping in Walmarts, at the bus stops, inside of buses and train stations. And I was like, you know what? That's what we need to be doing as a church. As a church, we need to just not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not be ashamed to go and just worship in front of people, no matter who they are. Because I'll tell you one thing, the enemy does not have a problem with insulting us. And we need to counterattack with an assault in praise and worship, church. We need to come back stronger than ever before with the worship, that song that we have in our hearts now. And I'll tell you what, it changes the atmosphere of a place. Because you know what? The demons will flee. Amen? They will flee. Anything, I noticed in different videos that I was watching, I seen different people getting uncomfortable. How many of you guys like when the devil's comfortable? You see, he shouldn't be comfortable inside of us. <laughs> Amen? He shouldn't be comfortable in the, the surrounding that we're in. Amen? That's when we get in trouble, right? When we're uh, warming our hands with the fire with the enemy. Kind of like Peter, right? But when we start to worship, when we start to praise, when we start to preach, the enemy, he gets a little nervous, amen, and he has to go. And I don't know about you, but I don't like him hanging around me too much. So we're to enter with shouting, we're to enter with service, we're to enter with singing, amen. And like these people did, they lifted their souls up unto the Lord, and you know what, they were just blessing the name of God. And you know, that, that video moved me so much that I was like, you know what? I want to sing that song. I want to sing that song. You know, in Psalms 40, verse 1, uh, David declares that song, that along with the salvation came a new song of praise into his heart. As a matter of fact, they made a song about it, going to dance like David danced, right? You know, we talked about it a little bit last week. And you know what that did for him was in the midst of his trial and turmoil that he was in, and all the things that are even in the midst of his sin, he started to shout. He started to sing. He danced himself out of his clothes. Amen. And they thought, you know, this guy's crazy. But he didn't care who was watching. He had no care in the world except to please his 
God. Because isn't that what we want to do as Christians? We want to please our God. When we were dysfunctional before, who did we want to please? Our boyfriend, our girlfriend, our spouse, our father, our mother. But God wasn't first. There shall be no other gods before me, says the Lord. So we have to please him first, and he'll take care of the rest. When we're good here, then we'll be all right this way. Amen? You guys following me this morning? So our entrance in needs to be with shouting, needs to be with service, needs to be with singing. Now we have to understand, okay, who's the person of Jesus now? Who is this person, if you don't know already, who is the person of Jesus? You see, this is the whole season right now of knowing who the person, why, why do we celebrate? What are we thankful for? We have to know that the Lord is good. He is good. He's good all the time. He is good and he is God. Jesus is God. And I believe Hebrews chapter 3, if any of the, the cults come up to you, the JWs, the Mormons, the Buddhists, the Taoism, uh, Hebrew Israelites, they come up to you and they have a rebuttal about who Jesus is. You take them to Hebrews chapter 3 where God himself is talking to Jesus and he says, your scepter, O God. You take them to that right there and say, look right here. God is calling Jesus God. Amen. Because that's who he is. He's our God. He's your God. He's everybody's God. Whether they like it or not, he's the one that created us, formed us, and fashioned us in his image. Amen? And we need to let him know. We have to praise him because of his creative power. Nature declares his glory. I mean, if you look at the different things, when we were in, in Florida a few weeks ago, um, you just look at the beauty. And I, I, there were so many things to look at there that were beautiful. I know it sounds weird, but we did this thing um, on a gator farm, and some of you guys might have seen the video. We were on those boats that skim across the, the water in, the, in the, the swamplands, you know, and we're out looking for alligators and things like that. And, and that was cool, you know, but, I mean, you see gators all over the place over there already. What I, we got to see the most beautiful array, different array of birds. Now, I know some people aren't into birds or anything like that. I'm kind of really not into birds, too, but... These were some of the most beautiful birds you've ever seen, all in one little spot. And I said, nature does declare your glory to light. Lord, I've seen colors on these birds I'd never seen before. And I said, only a creative God can do something like that. Only a creative God can make something like that. And we try to copy it with the colors that we make, but nothing compares to the glory of God. Amen? And his creative will for us. God's power is revealed in creation. If the world isn't enough, then look what he's done in your life. Look at how he's spoken to you, how he's called you by name. Before, when you were even in your mother's womb, he called you, he chose you, he set you free. There's another reason to praise God. Even if things are bad, you're still way ahead. Amen. There's a word also about his purchase. Now, the psalmist says this, we are his people. That means we're his personal possession. Some people are like, well, I don't want nobody. Nobody can possess me. Well, that's just the pride of life, isn't it? Amen. I don't belong to nobody. I don't belong to no man. I don't belong to no woman. Well, he's not man or woman. He's God. And he created you. He is the creator. He is the maker of you and I. Amen. And we have to remember that. That's another reason for us to be grateful. Now, he purchased us once and for all. Now, I looked in the New Testament, and there's three different words on the word redeemed. Now, we know what being redeemed means. It means to buy back, right? You guys remember the little Coke bottles? You still see them? They're like, uh, they come from Mexico. It says, buy back for five cents, right? That means you can redeem them, you can give them back, and they'll give you money, Right? That's what God did for us. So I looked up different words in the New Testament on the word redeemed. Now, the Greek word for redeemed in Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 is agorazo. And it means to buy in the marketplace. To buy in the marketplace. It has a reference to being a slave right off the auction block. That is what Jesus did for us when he died on the cross. He bought us. He bought us and he paid in full. We were sold under sin. Un but you know what? He bought us from the auction block. You are mine. You are mine. Paid in full. The next one is in Galatians chapter 9. The word redemption here is in the Greek, exorgarazo. 
And what that means is to take off the market. Now, for those of you that are married, you are taken off the market. Correct? That's what Jesus does because he's the husband and we are the bride of Christ, being the church. Right? We are off the market. No one else can purchase you. No one else can own you. And no amount of money could ever buy you because you belong to him and him alone. He paid, he paid in full, and he paid enough. Amen? He paid enough. In other words, Jesus paid the price for us so that we're no longer up for sale. Ooh, I like that. He bought us because he intends to keep us. Does he have keeping power? We're all testimony. How long has God kept some of you here? How many years? Do we have 25 years? 35 years. Any 40 year? Or over here somewhere? 50? 40? 40? If God can keep us for 40 years, he can keep us for 50, 80, 100 years. Amen? God, when he purchases us, which is what he did on the cross, he purchases us for good. Amen? There's no returns. Aren't you glad? There's no returns. The last one in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, redeem. This is a whole different word now. It's lutron. This means to release after the payment of the purchase price. In other words, it's somebody who buys a slave and then lets him go. Now, Sherry was talking this Wednesday about the cage, that some people, even though they're let go, choose to stay in the cage. Amen? So if you don't know what that's talking about, you can go back to Wednesday's sermon on Facebook, and you can see. But I love how it says that we are kept for good, and we're no longer on the market, and that when he does purchase us, uh, then he lets us go. Now, that doesn't mean that we're free to go sin, but that means we're free to go worship him, free to go give service unto him. We're allowed now, um, we get to work for him. We get to do those things. We don't have to, we get to. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Pastor Robert, does that sound familiar? We get to do those things. We have the privilege of serving Jesus Christ. I hear different people say at times, it was a privilege to serve the president. It was a privilege to serve the CEO. It was a privilege to do, uh, serve this person or that person. But you know what? Really, the only privilege it is to serve is the privilege of serving Jesus Christ, the one who matters, the only one who matters. So there's a word also about his provision. This verse reminds us that we are his flock. You know, um, I love what David said. He said this, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What a complete sentence that is right there, church. God is my shepherd. In other words, he tells me what to do. And that's that. That's what that's basically saying. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In other words, I don't need anything else. I just need him. He's going to provide. He's going to be, uh, he's going to give me everything that I need. Whatever it is, whether it's spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, he's the provider of all my needs. He's the provider of my finances. He's the provider of my well-being, my mental health. All those things are covered by Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That should be something instilled in our heart. It should be something that's instilled in our mind. Because when we, we're figuring that we're in lack or in doubt for something, Repeat that to yourself. You know, when, when my wife was sick uh, uh, about a year and a half ago with COVID, I remember we went to a doctor. And thank God the doctor was, uh, she was a believer. And she started speaking life into my wife. And she said, you know what, honey? Sometimes you got to pray for yourself. Lay hands on yourself. And I thought, you know what, what a powerful statement that is. Because sometimes, especially uh, at the time, you know, when COVID was so rampant, uh, it almost seemed worse than now, right? People don't want, oh, COVID, oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like, I'm out of here, right? But this lady was brave enough to be working at that time. At that time, when it was okay to be a doctor and not vaccinated. 
And she spoke life into my, my wife. And she told her, pray for yourself, honey. When nobody else is around, when nobody else wants to be around somebody who's sick, pray over yourself. Lay hands over yourself. And I thought, what a powerful statement that is right there. Because there are times when we feel alone, when we feel distraught and that nobody cares. And you know what? I have taken that same thing into practice myself. I'm just like, Lord, can you touch my feet? Can you touch my back? Can you touch my head? Can you touch my shoulder? I got to preach today, Lord. (laughs) You know? When I went to the doctor recently this week, I've been having issues with my feet. And the doctor says, okay, you have heel spurs on one side. And did you know that you have a hairline fracture on the other side? What'd you do? I said, I don't even know what I did. I said, I just got over getting a cyst removed from my side and a shot in my elbow for plantar fasciitis. I said, I'm getting things now I never even knew existed. And she's like, well, get used to it, honey. You're getting old. (laughs) I'm over here blaming the devil, and the devil ain't got nothing to do with it. (laughs) Amen? So what am I doing? I'm like, Lord, touch me here. Touch me here. Touch me here. Touch me here. Amen? I'm like, Lord, just cover the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot easier. Just cover me, Lord. Blanket me in your redemption. Blanket me in your healing. I pray over myself right now in the name of Jesus. I need to preach your word. I need to give good news. I need to shout. I need to sing. I need to dance. I need to worship. I cannot be slowed down by this 53-year-old broken body. Help me, Lord. And he always makes a way. He always makes a way. I don't come up here to complain. I'm telling you how good God is. Amen? No matter what I'm feeling, it ain't going to matter. And I know the enemy is listening to that. He's like, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to give you something else you've never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't nothing left, so all right. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> Amen? So we've entered into his presence. We already, we we figured out how to do that. We have an understanding of his person. And lastly, we have an expression of his praises. Now, these verses that we're talking about here in verse 4 and verse 5, if we go back, verse 4 and verse 5 say, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all the nations. Now, we come to him. And we know that we're going to be held accountable for everything that we do, every truth that we learn. So today, I'm going to let you know right now, you're going to be accountable for everything you heard from this pulpit today. Praise him. Worship him. Exalt him. Lift his name up as much as you can, whenever you can, wherever you can, as often as you can. When the tape rolls back, what are we going to be found doing? Worshiping, praising, exalting our king. Because I don't want to go up there and give him a crown with no jewels. I want to lay something at his feet that I can be proud of to give to him. Say, Lord, I did my best. I did things the way you told me to do them. In the midst of all the things that were going on, I still will worship you. And I want to lay that crown at his feet. And to hear those words from him, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into my rest. Enter into my joy. Enter into my peace. Amen. And isn't that what we want, church? We could spend 100 years here on earth if we're lucky. But what is it compared to eternity? We need to praise him at all times that we can. Our praise needs to be visible. It needs to be visible. You've seen these people here, you've seen people confused, and then you've seen people stand up, and they started to sing and shout along. Why? Because somebody had to lead. That's the problem. A lot of people don't want to lead. They don't want to be the one to start it out. Well, then all eyes are going to be on me. It's okay. It's all right. I'd rather be judged up there for doing right than be judged wrong down here for not doing nothing. Amen? We have to worship God. Now, in winding down, is this my second wind down or my first one? Oh, Johnny, only one person's counting. You guys are good. 
<laughs> we'll talk afterwards, Johnny. <laughs> I'm playing. So the Hebrew worshipers back in, in, in the psalm, the time of the psalmist, um, we're going to see real quick how they praise God. First of all, what they did, they clapped. Now, that wasn't to bring attention to them. It was to bring attention to the lost. Hey, we're worshiping our king. You want to join? That's not the only reason why we clap, to get attention to us. There's times where people have come, and they want to bring all the attention to themselves. They don't do the things they do here at home, and that's somebody who needs to check their heart, right? Last night, we had a gentleman. He came up to me, and I could tell he was inebriated. And he came up, and he said, I need to talk to you. I need to get on that microphone. I need to tell people about who the real Jesus is. And I said, that ain't going to happen, brother. I'm going to let you know right now. I don't care how big you are. <laughs> and I was like, Rich, come here. <laughs> you got to get the backup, you know what I mean? I'm saved, but I ain't dumb. <laughs> right? So I was like, that's not going to happen, brother. He said, I need to tell you that Jesus, first of all, didn't speak English. So the Bible you're reading is wrong. And I said, you know, but he wasn't giving any of us a, 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 a voice to say anything back to him. So we let him talk and go on with his rant. But it didn't stop us from our praise. It didn't stop us from testifying how good God is. It didn't stop us from doing anything. Because the enemy, anytime you're doing something good, he's going to try and throw a wrench in it. Amen? And that's what tried to happen. I, you know, he, he, the thing that surprised me was that he even asked for permission rather than going over there and just grabbing the mic. Because I've seen that before. I'm sure you guys have seen some pretty strange things in times past before too. Right? We all have. But the fact that he came and asked me for, he didn't know I was the pastor, first of all. You know, I'm sure I blended in with everybody else, you know. And the fact that he asked me permission, I thought, you know what, I'm going to have to be just straight and up front with this guy because the devil is straight and up front with me. I know that. He wants something of me. I'm like, mm-mm. So I said, no, that's not going to happen, brother. And I was just looking at the guys, and I was like. <laughs> 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 I mean, the guy was inebriated, right? You don't know what you don't know what to expect, but you know, I haven't always been a Christian, you know. So uh, I wasn't gonna do nothing physically to the guy, but I wasn't gonna get sucker punched either. <laughs> I love the Lord, but I can still, you know. So clapping was the first thing. Then lifting our hands. In Psalm sixty-three, verse four, well. For clapping, okay, Psalms 47, 1. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Because we're winners. We've already won. When he won, we won. We're on that team. Amen? You like being on the winning team? So do I. So next is lifting our hands, Psalm 63, 4. Thus I will bless the Lord, bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. Psalms 134, 2. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. When the hands were lifted up towards heaven is a sign of adoration. It's a sign of surrenderance. In other words, you're leaving yourself vulnerable. We're putting our hands up just like when our little children. When they're small, they're barely learning how to walk. They go like this because they want to be picked up, right? That's what they do. And when we do this unto God and we're singing worship and praise and praying to him, we lift our hands up, Abba. That's a, that's a term of adoration, Father, Abba, right? We lift our hands to him, pick me up, lift me up. I'm down right now. I'm hurting right now. I need to be in your arms. I need to be in your presence. Hold me. Care for me because we need those things. The last thing is dancing. Woo. Some of you guys like to dance, right? Is it just at the baile? Is it just at Zazu's? Is it just at the Boom Boom Room? Is it just at those places, the club? Right? Why can't we dance for the Lord? Why can't we sing and shout and dance and praise like David did? Why can't we do those things these days? 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14 says this, And David danced before the Lord with all his might. He, wore, he was girded with a linen ephod. 
when David contemplated the presence and the greatness of the Lord, it caused his feet to get happy and move around, right? I'm not going to do it because I have no rhythm, <laughs> but I'll do it if a bunch of other people do it and can't see me. <laughs> Amen? So dancing, shouting, singing, praising, worshiping. We want Thanksgiving to be Thanksgiving, don't we? Because it's not about the turkey. I saw this poor thing on the news, you know, and I think it was Corey Channel 10. Corey McCloskey was walking around all these turkeys, and he's looking at them, and one of them's giving him the eye, right? It's looking at him, and he goes, ha, 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 you don't know what's coming, do you? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, that poor turkey, he's going to be good, though, <laughs> right? Amen? Amen? It's not about the turkey. It's about Jesus. This time that you guys are going to have family from out of town, if you have family coming in from out of town, it's good to spend time with them, yes? Bring them. Bring them to worship. We pray for the very lost family members that we have. So why wouldn't we bring them to a night to worship? Let me show you what my God is capable of. Let me show you the redeemed. Let me show you the worship that will take you into that heavenly realm. Do you want to see that church? Do you want to experience that church? Do you, I mean, do we even know what real revival is? We need to experience that again. That's what's going to change our country, church. That's what's going to change this world. We need revival. Our hearts need revival. We don't have to wait for someone else to start revival. We are the revival. If we're spirit-led, we have to be like those people there, not be ashamed. It starts here in church. You can practice here today. We can practice worship. We can practice exaltation to our God. Stand with me this morning. I've seen so many things in the 28 years that I've served God. Nothing amazes me anymore than when God inhabits the praises of his people. There's only one thing that impresses me more than that as a pastor, as a man, as a Christian, and that's when one gives his life or her life to Jesus Christ. The greatest miracle of all, salvation. If you're watching here online, if you're here today this morning, and you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, it will be the best introduction you could ever have. 28 years ago, I gave my heart to him. And it was the best decision I ever made. I've been young and I'm getting old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken, ever, or begging for bread. Never. I'm going to say a prayer with you starting off here this morning. If you want to repeat this prayer, this is for those of you who don't know Jesus Christ or you're backslidden, I want to invite you to the front. We'll pray with you. We have a team of people on each side. If you have something a little more private you want to discuss, they'll pray for you. They'll anoint you with oil. They, they specialize in deliverance. They specialize in healing. All those things, all of God's people do. But these people have been trained. They're ready to go. They're armed with the word of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You can just come to the altar. And just surrender to him here too. The same thing that I did 28 years ago. I'm going to say a prayer and I want you to repeat this prayer. If you mean that with your whole heart, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain when you give your life to Christ. If you would just bow your heads, close your eyes with me this morning and just repeat this prayer after me. If you're watching online, you're welcome to do the same. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you a sinner in need of a savior. I believe you died on the cross. You rose on the third day and that you live forevermore. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would dwell within me. I invite you into my heart to rule, to reign, and to be my God. Jesus, forgive me of all my sin. 
past and present. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer this morning,